Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello everyone and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. Uh, I am Richard Seville of Fantasy Six Pack.net and joining me shortly is our full complement of Fantasy Edge uh, Edgers. Uh, uh, Jonathan Chan and Kevin Hall, both also of uh, Fantasy Six Pack.net. Well, we are into the semifinals. We're just finishing off the, uh, I guess we call it wild card week for fantasy playoffs for some, or quarterfinals as you may, may put it. And uh, some very interesting <laughs> starts to the playoffs. Um, I had a bye week in our Fantasy Six Pack League, and I'm just waiting to see what happens in for Scott Fishbowl. But, uh, Jono, how did you do in, uh, how are you doing in your fantasy playoffs? I know, uh, you don't have to, we won't have to talk about fantasy six pack, but, uh, you can talk about, uh, maybe some, how about something good? Do you have anything good happen? Yeah. <clears throat> Move through, uh, to the next round of my big money league. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, uh, T.Y. Hilton, now Nick Chubb. So things are going well in that league. Kev, what about you? Um, surprisingly this year I was either a super hit or miss. So in all the leagues I made the playoffs, I got a buy, but, uh, like I said, Scott Fishbowl. And then if I didn't make it, well, obviously I didn't make it. So the only thing that mattered for me this week was Scott Fishbowl, but I killed myself early by playing camp. So unless Lamar or Mark Andrews does something absolutely nuts, I probably am out. Yeah. I, uh, I, in Scott Fishbowl, I just need Lamar not to throw, just not to have a bad game. Just have, if he has a, a reasonable game, it should be okay. Just that's all I hope, and don't get hurt. He's got a rushing touchdown already, so you're, you're almost set. Almost set, but a uh, long way to go. <laughs> so this week on the Fantasy Edge, we're going to be kind of be more, a little bit more uh, playoff orientated. So, uh, so we're not going to. So our usual moving on up to me is no point about anybody moving on up as uh, because there's only three games left in the season and only two that are relevant to fantasy. So we're going to be a little bit more playoff orientated this week. But before we get into all that, a little bit of the news since the Sunday action. And uh, we'll start with uh, uh, Debo Samuel. Uh, hamstring out a while. Shanahan will not rush him back unless the 49ers make the playoffs. But uh, that seems like quite a long shot because they're five and eight. And uh, and as I looked on the on the on the playoff possibilities, uh, they don't control their own destiny, of course, um, and they only have a six percent chance of making playoffs. So looks like Debo Samuel is going to be going out. But Kev, going forward, um, Debo Samuel um, is basically a hands. A hands-on type of receiver. He's not a. Uh, he's he's an after the catch type guy, as we've we've come to know. But uh, how's your? How do you gauge him for twenty twenty one? Um, I mean, I kind of just consider him the same as I did coming into this year. But really, it depends on which quarterback they get. Uh, I think with the Shanahan offense, it, it's uh, it's not going to be. Well, personally, I think Ayuk is better as a receiver, and Debo Samuel has kind of been more of a gadget type guy. So. Um, Ayuk is the guy I'd want going forward. I don't think that Shanahan offense is, is going to be enough to support Ayuk and Kittle when he gets back and Debo Samuel as like a volume receiver. So I think the most you're going to get out of him is kind of like a high upside wide receiver four ish. I think Samuel is probably one of those players who, like you always say, is better for regular football than, uh, fantasy football. Yeah. And John, uh, even if Debo was to come back, uh, you're not starting him in fantasy playoffs anyway, are you? No, you can't. Coming off, uh, you know, a hamstring injury, which is notorious for, you know, for re-injury. And then, as Kevin said, Ayuk is just looking better. So, Debo's way too risky unless you're desperate with other injuries and whatnot. Yeah, and uh, Ayuk um, and Kittle with them coming back. Kittle, um, I saw a clip of Kittle, actually. You mentioned him, Kev, that uh, he seems pretty determined to get back to another Super Bowl. I saw uh, some clips in, on NFL Network of his determination to get back to the, the big game. So, um, he's a he's a real, uh, I, I like his spirit. Uh, of uh, George uh, Kittle, so he's a pretty good uh, football player, and uh, yeah, he'll be battling with uh, Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk is a uh, gave a uh, <clears throat> few eye opening uh, plays uh, on the weekend, and uh, definitely a starter for your fantasy playoffs, right? Uh, John Brown expected to return. To, to practice this week, but uh, my question is, John, Gabriel Davis seems like a like a better receiver than than John Brown to me. 
No, I don't think Gabriel Davis is a better receiver. I think John Brown is he's just a healthier receiver than John Brown at the moment. I guess that's uh, fair. Davis has shown flashes like as a big play guy, but I think Brown is still a, a better receiver than Davis is given the you know, given the opportunities. Mm. And Kev, uh, to the Bills offense, does does John Brown, if he returns, does it just is it a a, a big uh, uptick for the Bills offense for uh, Josh Allen and company, or is it really not much different if John Brown returns? Because yeah, I don't think it. Yeah, I don't think it's not any different. It's just they're kind of rolling right now, and um, I mean they play the Broncos and the Patriots next two weeks. I don't really think there's any defense up here, so. Whatever bills you have, or at least the bills pass catchers, you're rolling them out anyway. Josh Allen, you're playing him no matter what. So if John Brown comes back, if he doesn't, um, it doesn't really matter. And Kev, staying with you, uh, Matt Stafford, doubtful for Week 15 versus the Titans. Uh, are we going to see Ga- uh, Kenny Galladay back, or and uh, how does that harm your uh, Detroit pass catchers with Chase Daniel? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what is going on with Galladay. I think he hasn't played in like seven weeks and. For whatever reason, he hasn't been placed on IR. So first of all, um, I hate you because you're taking up a spot on my my bench and I can't drop you, but you're going to be useless. And then, yeah, with Chase Daniel coming back, it's just a toss up. You know, everyone is going to be lowered in value. And the one that probably hurts the most is is Marvin Jones, especially with Galladay coming back. And uh, Jono, does this leave Swift as the only uh, trustworthy guy on the on the Lions? For the playoffs? Uh, no, you can you can still trust Hawkinson. Uh, as bad as tight end is, like Hawkinson is still a top five option at the position. Mm, okay. Um, and John, what do you think of this? This news came out. Uh, um, the Texans coach. The Texans actually uh, have Deshaun Watson as part of the committee for selecting the new head coach. Do you think this is a good idea to uh, get Deshaun Watson in on the talks? Yeah, it lets him build, you know, trust with the ownership and. Uh, a little bit of input on who the new coach is and because right now Deshaun Watson is that franchise and if they bring in another coach that's not going to work with them then you're essentially killing another what four or five years of your franchise um so yeah if he has a little bit of input then it can't hurt mm. and uh Kev uh, on the playoff side of things with the Texans uh Kiki QT um scored a touchdown but not much more um, are we, uh, are we trusting him for the playoffs? And what about the running back situation? Uh, I'm not trusting anything in that offense except Deshaun Watson. And, and if he's banged up, then obviously I'm not trusting him either. Um, the whole offense is, is just a mess right now. Um, it, it's hard to, if you're playing one of them, good luck to you. I mean, it's, it's really not looking great. Um, I, I Kiki Kuti, I mean, he's probably what a wide receiver four, and at this point, you just if you're playing him, um, you you you're lucky to even be alive. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking lucky to be alive, uh, Gardner Minshew, uh, he's back in the starting role, uh, and he will start in Week 15 for the Patriots. Uh, Kev, what difference uh, does it make for the uh, for the Jags off? And is he just gonna is he just gonna throw to his heart's content? Uh, and just air it out and and uh, throw caution to the wind. Yeah, I think uh, I think the upside for the Jacksonville offense passing attack, especially, is is a little bit higher. Um, I personally never really understood why Minshew got benched. Um, it's not like Jake Luton is, is any good. So uh, Minshew is is just going to come in and he's kind of you know he always gets the Ryan Fitzpatrick comparison, but it, it's apt. You know he's just going to come in and sling it a lot. The Ravens theoretically should kill them, and so they should be playing from behind a lot. So I, I think as a Chark owner, you should be a little bit happy. If that you see Minshew back, mm-hmm. and that was kind of my uh, my question to you, uh, Jono, is uh, Chark. Um, can we put him? Can we put Chark back on the chart, so to speak? Uh, he moves up, like Kevin said, but I don't know if you can still trust him. Trust him because it's not like he wasn't targeted against the Titans. He had nine targets, but he only caught two passes. Uh, same thing week before that. You know, seven targets, two ca- two catches again. He's been super inefficient. I don't know if it's Glennon or whatever, but this week he's going up. He'll go, be facing the Ravens, who are significantly better defense than the Titans and Vikings are. So eh, I probably still wouldn't start him after the year he's had. Mm. And, of course, many people are very interested in the Christian McCaffrey news. And uh, Matt Rule says uh, CMC will play again in 2020. So there's no shutdown. But um, Jono is... I don't think we can expect a full workload for uh, just for for the 
for the Panthers just playing out the string, right? Yeah, that's what logic would tell you, but you you never know. This is it's a complete guessing game at this point. If McCaffrey plays, then maybe Matt Rule lets him lets him go full out. Who knows? We we can speculate, but we can't really can't really say. Logic dictates again that it won't be full workload, but who knows? And Kevin, who on the Panthers do you like uh, going into uh, into the playoffs if uh, if DJ Moore returns? Is uh... Is everything okay with Teddy Bridgewater and the uh, passing offense? And I'm speaking, of course, if Christian McCaffrey does not return. Um, are we okay with uh, Fantasy Panthers? Yeah, I think okay is probably the, the perfect word because I, I wouldn't be too excited to start any of those three receivers. But, you know, they're serviceable enough as like a wide receiver three or a flex option. Um, I think the, the, the volume is going to be there as, as we've seen. And like you said, if McCaffrey doesn't return, then you can pretty much just expect to see more of the, more of the same. All right. And Kev, uh, finally, uh, Justin Herbert, he needs just three more touchdown passes to set the rookie record for, for, uh, touchdowns in a season. And that's held by Baker Mayfield, which the score is, I believe, still seven to seven, Kev, in the, in the Browns Ravens game. Yep. All right. So, and Baker Mayfield has 27. Um, do you think, uh, in, in the playoff sense, uh, because that record is on the line, do you think uh, starting Justin Herbert to see him go after it is uh, is is kind of like an out of the box thinking for uh, for fantasy playoffs? They play the Raiders this weekend. Yeah, I think you you start Justin Herbert no matter what. I think uh, on the season he's he's a top ten quarterback when he's been starting, probably higher than that. And then on top of that, the just the matchup with the Raiders and then the Broncos next week, it's hard to bench him at this point. I know he's been kind of declining a little bit. Um, over these last couple of weeks, but I don't think there's too many options that have a higher upside and a better matchup than him. Right. And uh, I mentioned Baker Mayfield, Jono, just as a side issue. Uh, Baker Mayfield, um, uh, the way he's looking in this game, he's looking a lot more um, steady. Um, can we trust him in the playoffs? Yeah, I don't see why not. Like he's looking, he's been looking better over the last couple of weeks. He had a really good game uh, last week, obviously against the Titans. Uh, as you said, looks decent against a good Ravens defense. Um, but he does get the Giants next week, who get another good, another good defense. Uh, obviously shut down Russell Wilson uh, last week. So, and it's a prime time game. So I don't know how Baker does in prime time, but I guess we'll have to watch this one too. Um, but yeah, if you need, you know, QB1 streamer-ish, like a low-end streamer, then yeah, why not go Baker? All right. So uh, just looking beyond this game. So Kevin, you got to keep us updated on what's going on with uh, Lamar Jackson. I'm interested because of uh, because of fantasy. Um, some bad fantasy scores this week. Uh, Cam Newton, you mentioned, Kev. Uh, bad Ezekiel Elliott, another l- low game. Uh, Chris Godwin. Uh, I'll be talking about them a little bit later. And Evan Engram. Um, uh, did terrible for your fantasy uh, playoffs. Uh, two receptions, 18 yards, but the Giants were quite poor. Uh, well, it's actually Daniel Jones uh, once again as the, the one. The top, the top fantasy scorers in the in the skill positions were Aaron Rodgers. There he is, right on time for playoffs. Derrick Henry doing it. Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, the big names that you like, uh, all top fantasy scorers this week in first week of the playoffs. So. Time for what we learned. Uh, Kev, you haven't been around for a while, so why don't you start us off? What, what have you learned this week and uh, and uh, going into the playoffs? Uh, I learned Ed, Gus Ogres is good. Okay, he just scored a touchdown. Um, uh, the thing I learned this week actually happened, I think, on Thursday. Um, we just learned that Cam Akers is the dude in Los Angeles. Uh, rushed 29 times for 171 yards against the Patriots. Um, he was just really really steady uh, i don't remember him breaking any like really long runs or anything like that but pretty I much do. every run he had <laughs> i had do <laughs> positive huh i remember him uh, breaking some uh, a couple of good did runs. he have a long run yeah a couple of I decent don't know. runs I, I stopped watching that game got out of hand um but uh okay four runs of 10 plus yards that's actually yeah again that's really solid um but th- you know the best thing about that is uh, he played 81 percent of the snaps and malcolm brown only got one touch on the game so um it seems like he's going to be the uh main guy in that backfield i mean we can all hope but we never know with running backs uh you can only kind of really assume that he's going to be the main guy given this kind of performance so that's you know perfect you know that this backfield gets sorted out rounding into the playoffs because you know we were dealing with that three-headed backfield prior to this yeah it took long enough didn't it to finally get that backfield sorted out and i guess they basically just wanted to because acres is a rookie they just 
just wanted to bring them along, which they did rather slowly, but uh, they did. And um, I think the I think what really intrigues me is what we make of Cam Akers for 2021. What do you think, Jono? Uh, Cam Akers probably ends up in the, like, the second or third tier of running back, like the ones that you see get taken in the uh, the beginning of the third uh, kind of area around where Kenyon Drake was this year. Yeah. Um, you know, based off uh, small sample size, uh, really good performances toward the end of the season. That's probably where he'll get taken next year. I'm actually thinking, uh, well, the way I feel right now, I mean, from what I saw, the eye test. Um, I don't know where you feel, Kev, but I, I, I'm thinking even uh, mid-second round, uh, as early as that, uh, depending on things. I mean, there's so many good receivers that are out there right now. I don't know if, I don't know what if it's going to be one of those zero RB years again because we've got just tons of talent in the wide receivers right now. But uh, how do you feel? Where do you feel on 2021 on, on, on Acres, Kev? Mid second round would put him at pick number 17 or 18. Yeah. That's probably a little too rich for me. Um, I can, off the top of my head, I'm, he's probably like RB14 or something like that, which probably places him somewhere in the third round. Okay. Um, I mean, there's going to be people who jump at him because, you know, he's a rookie. He's going to have upside. He's going to absolutely destroy the Jets next week. And uh, so and then he has Seattle in week 16. So he's going to win a lot of people their fantasy championships. And then I could see him, you know, pushing his stock even higher. Mm. Uh, but yeah, mid second round, maybe a little too rich, but uh, you never know with the hype going on next year. If they, if they don't make any moves to the offense, uh, to the running back room, then, um, you know, he, he might be worth it. Let's move along to Jono. What do you got, uh, Jono? What are you uh, seeing? I uh, got another rookie running back, uh, Jonathan Taylor. Again, finally arrived. Uh, it took until week 11 for the Colts and Frank Reich and the and the coaching staff to kind of figure it out. Um, over his last three games, he's averaging over 18 carries, uh, 128 uh, yards from scrimmage a game, and over 100 yards on the ground a uh, game on average. Uh, he looks good, uh, very, very good, like the person that everyone thought he would be coming into the season. Yeah. Um, don't know why the Colts took this long to kind of let him loose. Maybe it was, you know, pass blocking or what have you. But now they actually have like a solid one, two with Taylor, you know, pushing piles, doing the early down stuff and Hines coming in as a solid, solid change of pace. So mm. Taylor, again, like Akers, he's going to win people uh, some leagues, especially because he's got the Texans next week. And yeah, he's got, he's looking like a first rounder next year. Yeah, he is. Uh, I would say he's definitely I like him over Cam Akers for sure. Um, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely in the first round conversation. Wouldn't you say Kev? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is kind of what we all foresaw. It just took about eight weeks longer than we expected. Well, yeah, it did. And, and because we thought Marlon Mack, uh, hindered his, uh, value, but I don't know, things kind of were jumbly at the beginning and just didn't, I don't know, like you say, Jono, it took a while for, for him to finally arrive and, uh, and here he is. And now we're looking at. 2021 and uh so uh, my main concern is that the, the Steelers the Steelers are falling off at the wrong time and especially Deontay Johnson who got benched for half the game because of uh drop passes um he came back in the game and I guess he got a, a bit of a, a tongue lashing from Mike Tomlin and uh he actually sparked the Steelers to try and rally against the Bills but it just wasn't to be um the Steelers just um, John, they just don't look like they are uh, strong and capable um, of carrying your fantasy teams. Not, I mean, I mean, the only solid guy who's really you know holding the fort a little bit is uh, Juju. Um, so things are um, your fantasy Steelers are not uh, are, are are a little shaky right now. Yeah, um, we mentioned this the past couple of weeks about the Steelers. They get extremely pass happy, and it be- it gets really it becomes really easy to defend them because they they just don't establish the run uh, for whatever reason. Is it's their O line or what have you? But James Conner has not been good. I'll talk about him more later on. But um, yeah, the offense gets too pass happy, too one dimensional. And if the receivers, like you mentioned, Deontay Johnson keeps dropping passes, then it just takes away most of what made them successful early on. Yeah. 
And uh, so, yeah, we'll we'll talk about the running the running game and what the, what they're going to need to do, uh, especially entering the playoffs. They've really got nothing uh, going. I mean, they cannot. Uh, be, I think there's a lot to do with the offensive line, but we'll get into that later. Um, moving on up now. We usually do moving on up here, and since there's no moving on up uh, really to do because there's only three games left in the season, uh, we will. Um, take a look at uh, players that uh, are worthy uh, to uh, put into a spot. And I like, I like what I've been seeing of Gabriel Davis. And uh, he's a guy I wish I could own. Now he's, I guess he's, he's not, I guess, I, he's not a, a, a perfect start, but right now, I like him more than uh, a lot of main players to start in uh, in fantasy. I think uh, now I know John Brown is coming back, and that might have some effect, but I, I'm not so sure about that. I think uh, Gabriel Davis has earned a lot of trust in the offense, and uh, Josh Allen keeps keeps uh, giving him looks. So um, Gabriel Davis, uh, I think, is a, a very playoff worthy player um, for those in. I wouldn't say it doesn't even have, really have to be a deep league, but um, <laughs> excuse me, but, uh, um, but definitely someone who can fill in, uh, like if you're, you know, like you say, Kenny Galladay, we just still don't know what's going on, but, uh, um, Gabriel Davis, um, if you're stuck and you're in the playoffs, uh, Gabriel Davis is not a, is not a bad guy to give a shot. He's a very playoff worthy player. Jono, uh, if yeah, you want to talk uh, on that or, my or play you know, sorry, if you want to, uh, ex- <laughs> expand or have a critique on that, you can, but, uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Davis, like I said before, he's shown flashes of being a big play guy. Um, Excuse me. But my issue is, as you said, uh, John Brown is coming back, and Davis was already on the low end of targets. Uh, He had eight targets uh, targets in yesterday's game, which was the highest he's seen since week five. Uh, Otherwise, he's averaging under five targets a game. Um, Even with Brown out in weeks 12 and 13, he only saw four targets uh, in each game. So if with Brown back, he's not really going to get the volume that you need uh, in a playoff in a playoff start. So it's it's a uh, it's a it's a risky start with Davis, especially if Brown plays. All right. Uh, Go on with your uh, playoff worthiness. My worthy guy is David Montgomery. Um probably pretty obvious at this point, but he got a lot of flack early in the season um, for the Bears offense being terrible and now he's just rising above that and proving that he's actually a really good running back granted it is against some poor run defenses but over the last three weeks he's averaging uh over seven yards a carry uh, he scored three three touchdowns in the last three weeks uh he's averaging just under five targets and he's had just about 40 receiving yards in each game uh it's the games could be even better uh if you can believe it, he's only had like yesterday against the the uh, Texans in a game that the Bears blew them out. He only had 11 carries, which just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why Chicago decided to keep throwing it when they're up by 30 points. But eh, who am I to to say they won by you know by 29 points? But Montgomery upcoming in the playoffs, he's got the Vikings, the Jaguars, and the Packers again. So three soft run defenses that he can finish off the season strong. Yeah, I really like, uh, I think he's, <clears throat> I don't know, he's come to life at the right time. So, uh, definitely a good, uh, a good guy to, uh, a good guy to have. And they play next. Who they got next up, Jono? Vikings. All right. Uh, Kev, I know you're a David uh, Montgomery, uh, fan, I think. Yeah, big time David Montgomery fan. Um, wouldn't expect him to get another 80 yard touchdown, but yeah, he's going to be steady going forward. Uh, pretty much everything Jonathan says, it's hard to disagree with that. The volume is going to be there for sure. And, um, if the offense keeps rolling, you know, he's yeah. going to be good. And, uh, like I say, they got the Vikings next. So, uh, good luck to that. Um, Kev, who you got for, uh, playoff worthiness? Yeah. So my moving on up is, or playoff worthiness. Sorry. I guess just memory. same thing. <laughs> uh, T.Y. Hilton. Um, he's I like just been him. on, on fire the last three weeks. He's got 277 yards and four touchdowns. We kind of wrote him off at the beginning of the year when he was just pretty much not doing anything, but he's come alive in the past three weeks, just in time for the playoffs. Uh, he's got Houston next week who absolutely are just falling apart. Pittsburgh in week 16 is not a fantastic matchup, but um, if you kept faith in T.Y. Hilton or were able to pick him up, then you, you've got a guy you could definitely start. Right. Uh, yeah. Pittsburgh and, and that would be the finals. And, uh, they got the Texans next, so that's. Uh, I, I really like. I, we we talked about T. Y. Hilton uh, last week, 
as just came roaring back. I mean, he came in, I think it was an underrated, overrated thing. Uh, he was overrated, then he was underrated. And I mean, he was lost. He was, he was right, uh, close to off playoff radar, uh, fantasy radar, wasn't he, Jono? Yeah, just up until what, three, three weeks ago. Uh, people were writing off TY, but hey, he's back. He's, uh, finally got that chemistry going with Rivers and he looks good. He does. He's great. Moving right along to, uh, to our next. Uh, segment which is a uh, playoff uh nervy nervy playoff starters and uh my nervy playoff starters are the are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers receivers um most notably uh Chris Godwin and Mike Evans I I don't know whether it's Brady or or what it's I know they beat the uh the Vikings but um the involvement of Evans and Chris Godwin is a little bit worrying. I know that, that you probably have to start them, but gee, uh, geez, uh, Kev, they're they're not easy starts. No, none of them are are easy starts. But it, you know, they're such big names; it's hard to get away from them. So that that's the type of thing that makes these decisions pretty difficult. Yeah, I, I the uh, now we can look at the matchup for Week 15, and they play the Falcons, so that might be a bit of a help. Um, John. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a great medicine. Yeah. Anybody, anytime you're playing the Falcons, so. But I'm a little bit concerned about Tom Brady, but I mean, is, I don't know, I think there's definitely something, I think it's starting to happen, don't you think, Jono, the, the, uh, that age syndrome is starting to, is starting to show a little bit. Yeah, um, a little bit of age, obviously. Uh, father time is again undefeated, the old cliche, but a lot of it also is that they're not really running an offense, uh, that's suited to Brady. Obviously, Brady likes his, you know, short passes, passes down the middle. But, you know, his arguably his best weapon, Mike Evans, is, you know, an outside receiver, deep pass, which is just really not tailored to, to Brady's strengths. And Bruce Arians has been slow to kind of adjust to what made Brady so good. So uh, who knows if they're going to, you know, adjust that eventually. He's also leaned a lot on Gronk, less so lately, but it's kind of thrown a wrench into the offense, slowed them down, made them a little inconsistent. So we'll see how, how they can work things out before the playoffs start. Yeah, he is. Uh, Brady's trying to turn it into sort of like a Belichick-ish offense, and that's just not the way Arians runs things. And I, I'm not sure if... Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work out in the off season um, for things. I mean, uh, I mean, even Antonio Brown is like, you know, why is he there? <laughs> Basically, you know, um, not using him very much. But anyway, uh, Jono, uh, playoff nerves for who? Yeah, my playoff nervy guy is James Conner. Uh, I alluded to him earlier when we were talking about the Steelers offense. Uh, Conner over the last five games uh, is averaging under four yards a carry. Uh, 3.5 to be exact. If you take away uh, the game against the Jags, uh, in week 11, in which the Steelers won 23 to 7, or 27 to 3, excuse me, uh, he's averaging under three yards a carry in the last five games. This isn't exactly against good defenses either. Like the Cowboys and Bengals and, you know, the Bills run defense isn't great either. And, um, like we talked about earlier, I don't know if it's the offensive line. I don't know if, you know, they just, the volume is gone and he just can't get anything going, but, He's Connor's not been good. Uh, the Steelers offense, as you said, is falling apart and he's not scoring touchdowns. He hasn't scored since week eight uh, against the Ravens. And you can't really, I guess, trust based and go, oh, yeah, it's the Bengals. He can score because no, he didn't. Last time he faced the Bengals, he had 13 rushes for 36 yards and uh, didn't really do much else. So, uh, yeah, I. I would be very wary of playing James Conner in the playoffs based on how the Steelers are looking. Yeah, I uh, I have to agree. Um I think in the off season, I think the I think the uh Steelers are going to look for a new quote unquote bus. Like, you know, I'm not saying that it has to be exactly like Jerome Bettis or anything, but or uh you know, or Le'Veon Bell or something like that. But I mean, they definitely need that part of the running attack. They're so overloaded with uh, wide receivers. And to tell you the honest truth, I don't think Ben Roethlisberger has got much wear on the tires left. Uh, he Ben didn't look great. Uh, he was actually we we talk about the drop passes of the the Steelers, but Ben. Uh, Ben looked kind of like just lumbering around. He's not, I mean, Ben, Ben used to have a little bit more, uh, quickness around the pocket. I mean, he could move a little bit more, but he's, he's just sort of lumbering in there. I don't, I don't know how you see it, Kev, but, um, and speak about the running game too, a little bit to, of the Steelers. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Totally Short unbiased sweet. opinion. Totally unbiased opinion. Yeah, he hates the Steelers because they're. You all see it. They suck. Well, yeah, they do suck. They, they do. do suck. All right, who else sucks, Kev, for for playoff nerves? <laughs> uh, my guy is a big name. Probably went top four in your drafts. Ezekiel Elliott. He's just, I mean, this is pretty much exactly what we expected. It's just kind of been getting worse and worse and worse as the year goes on. Um, yeah. I mean, he, he doesn't catch passes. Uh, if you were ever counting on anything for him, it was his volume and his touchdowns. But he's not getting the volume. He's not scoring a touchdown. He scored one touchdown since week five. Uh, so it, it's ugly for him. Uh, this week, he only played 60% of the snaps and had exactly as many touches as Tony Pollard did. He's kind of nursing a calf injury, so maybe that's a concern. But um, on top of all that, he has a really bad matchup this week against the Niners. So it's going to be really hard to start him. Although, you know, if you have him, he's somehow still uh, the RB12 on the season, probably because often he got off to such a good start. But um, don't be scared to sit him for like a lesser name. Uh, I know it's tough, but you got to do what you got to do. I don't know. He might play better in Jerry World against the, the Niners, maybe. Um, the Niners are the Niners are hurting a little bit. They, uh, they got they got pretty gashed. Well, I don't think they got gashed so much by Washington. Well, we'll talk about that in, uh, when we get to uh, Mr. Unlimited, but which is actually, it is time for Mr. Unlimited, isn't it? I think so. Is it that time? Is it that time? I'm checking now. Yes, folks, it is time for Mr. Unlimited. Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. Yeah, Mr. Unlimited this week. Uh, my Mr. Unlimited is uh, a bit of a different. My Mr. Unlimited is Chase Young um, representing the Washington uh, DST. Uh, scored 23. Uh, Chase Young just basically owned that uh, owned that game against the 49ers. Uh uh, two batted balls, uh, forced a, a, a sack fumble, uh, uh, grabbed a fumble for a touchdown, constant pressure on Mullins all game. Uh, I've never seen a defensive player, and he's a rookie too, that just, he just, he was awesome. I just have to say, Chase Young is an awesome football player. Number 99 of the Washington uh, football team. My, my Mr. Unlimited is Chase Young representing the Washington, uh, DST for, uh, Mr. Unlimited this for week 14. Jono. Uh, uh, oh shoot. Can I even go with him? They win. They, they did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I forgot. I forgot. Okay. I had to double check because I've done this before. Uh, Derek Henry, uh, in the most predictable 35 point fantasy game of all time, uh, Derek Henry went 215. Uh, and two touchdowns against the Jags. Uh, this is the third consecutive year that the late season second game against the Jags, he went off. I think it was two years ago, he went for 204 touchdowns. Last year is 180 and three touchdowns. So yeah, this is, he is the highest scoring player of the week and it's Derrick Henry. Come on now. Let's let let's not try to get let, let's not get cute in well, week fourteen with Mister Unlimited. Uh, well, I don't know. It's up to Kevin. Kevin, let's you're the arbiter. Uh, you are the judge. Uh, Chase Young or Derrick Henry for Mister Unlimited this week? Yeah, I'm not gonna get cute. Derrick Henry has been carrying me all season, and you love to see it. Just showing up when he wants to, sh- when he when he needs to show up. Two hundred plus yards, two touchdowns, like clockwork. Like Jonathan said, somehow unsurprising, he put up 35 fantasy points. Um, you love to see it, and when you, you know, fulfill expectations, feel, yeah, you got Mr. Unlimited for the week. And so. keep in mind that he, at the moment, he's <coughs> at, he only needs 156 yards to get to 2,000, and then so he 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 would only need uh 261 yards to pass Eric Dickerson's record and he has the Lions, the Packers and the Texans coming up. So he can straight up just do it against the against the Lions this week. That can't be right. I guess it could be, but uh Oh, that so, is right. So you yeah, won't you he won't just straight up beat Eric Dickerson in week 15. Like why not? All right. Well, there we are. Derrick Henry, Mr. I shouldn't I shouldn't carp. He's on my fantasy team in F6P, but I just it's felt unlimited. Just felt like Chase. Be unlimited. I interrupted it, but anyway, Chase, uh, Chase, uh, pardon me, Derek Henry. <laughs> All right, waiver wire. <laughs> Boo, 
Waiver wire time. Um, uh, John, oh, you're the waiver wire guy. Uh, start us off with who who should we pick of of all the RBs, WRs, and we've got a few a few guys, a few a few decent picks on the waiver wire this week. Who should we gar- grab? Uh, what position do you want? Uh, give me a. I need a wide receiver this week. Um. <clears throat> I'll go with, well, I talked about Tim Patrick last week, so I won't do it again, even though he's still getting so much disrespect. Um, I'll go KJ Hamler, his teammate. Uh, Hamler was kind of hyped up coming into the season uh, as part of this incredible rookie draft class, and he finally kind of had a breakout game uh, this past week, 86 yards and two touchdowns on two catches. Uh, He broke out for a 37-yard and then a 49-yard touchdowns uh, in that order. Um, He looks like the most explosive uh, like the biggest playmaker the Broncos have. He's not as steady as fellow rookie Jerry Judy, but he's he just seems to be a bigger playmaker. That could be because Judy's dealing with injuries or whatnot. But yeah, um, if Hamler gets a little bit more volume going forward, which would make sense considering the Broncos are super young team, then he could uh, pay dividends in the playoffs. But it would be a risk to start him just because you don't know whether he's going to get you know, more than three targets, similar to Gabriel Davis in that uh, sense. I started uh, Peyton Barber instead of Hamler in SFBX, so my bad. But uh, I mean, uh, that's, that, that was objectively the correct move. Nobody was going to see this coming from Hamler. No, but I could have started him maybe instead of maybe instead of somebody else too. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember my lineup. I was kind of a little bit disgusted about that move, but I, I mean, I still ended up okay because of Aaron Rodgers. But anyway, yeah, KJ Hammer, I like him. Uh, I picked him up. I'm surprised he was on the waiver wire. Unlike Kevin's uh, section in the SFBX, uh, you know, everybody's on the ball. That's funny about your Kevin SFBX. Your guy is your your league, your section or division. Nobody seems to care. There's availability on the waiver wire for anybody you want, practically. Um, yeah, but I, I think maybe it's just uh, they're not worth wanting because we have, uh, I think, four dudes in the in the playoffs right now. So, um, yeah, I can't really can't really question what they've been doing all season. Uh, uh, anybody you like on the board that uh, John was set up here? Um, there. I mean, the easy one is Jalen Hurts. Uh, I mean, he has two great matchups coming up. He's a running quarterback. You know, the recipe at, at this point. Uh, uh, this, we've seen it with Taysom Hill. Running quarterback, good matchups, equals fantasy points. But uh, the guy that I would like to advise guys pick up is Jeff Wilson, um, just because it does. It looks like Moster is hurt again. Derek McKinnon stinks. Tevin Coleman stinks. And Jeffrey Wilson gets Dallas next week, who absolutely stinks. So... Uh, again, the recipe go against bad matchups. Mm, yeah, I uh, don't mind that. Uh, um, I always get DeAndre Washington mixed up with the other Washington, the other guy with uh, Dwayne Washington, I think his name is. And yes. I always get those guys mixed up. And so when I saw DeAndre Washington come on the field for Miami, hey, that's not that's not DeAndre Washington. So I got oh maybe I'm thinking of Dwayne Washington because Dwayne Washington is kind of like taller and a little bit more. Uh, like here, where is this where DeAndre Washington's a little bit more, uh, compact and looks like a running back? You know what I mean? DeAndre Washington, yeah, he looks good. And Gaskin, if he's out, I like, uh, DeAndre Washington. Yeah, definitely. Jono, anybody else that we're going to pick up for the playoffs? Uh, yeah, if you're struggling for a tight end, you can look into Dan Arnold. Um, he's developed quite the rapport with Kyler Murray over the last few weeks. Uh, Arnold has three touchdowns in his last, uh, two games. Um, and four of the last six touchdowns that Kyler Murray has thrown have gone to Arnold. Um, the problem with Arnold, as with most, uh, I guess streamable tight ends is that the volume's not there. He hasn't gotten more than four targets in, uh, any of his, uh, any game this season. But he's become a consistent uh, red zone target, getting a uh, red zone, uh, yeah, like a red zone touch, red zone target in each of the last four games. Cardinal to be able to say that is Kenyon Drake. So Arnold is becoming a bigger part of the offense inside the twenty, uh, which is all key, all you can really ask for out of tight ends this year. To somebody that has a chance to find the end zone, and that's that's going to be your guy. Yeah, the only concern I have with that is uh, that Dan Arnold. Um, right now, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the Arizona offense. And Kyler Murray, um, I don't know what's wrong there, but um, it just seems like there's no gas in the tank at the moment. Um, Dan Arnold is kind of safe in a way, like you say, because Kyler Murray isn't 
I mean, it took him how many quarters before he finally started throwing to DeAndre Hopkins? I mean, I wonder, like, it was like, when did DeAndre Hopkins get his first catch? Like, it was like, I don't think he had one. You were waiting for DeAndre Hopkins to get a, a catch in that game. John, do you, you probably know that. No, uh, I didn't watch the Cardinals game. Um, I don't know how long it took DeAndre Hopkins to get a catch, but his line ended up looking pretty good, so can't really complain as an mm, owner. I guess not. But um, yeah, they did. The the Cardinals did win, so beat the Giants. Um, we got to drop players to pick up anybody. So um, I'm going to start with a big one. Uh, not really a big one, but uh, a guy that's kind of like that. You were only starting for the first half of the season, getting what you could out of him. Um, I think you can drop Todd Gurley um, if you need somebody else. And, oh. Which <laughs> well, Kevin, you you gasped at that. Would you oh, drop no. Chuck Clark? Just ran into the field goal post. <laughs> Like he was trying to, he was trying to catch a a hail mary that Baker overthrew, and he wasn't looking. He was track, trying to track the ball, and he just ran into the vocal post. He looks okay, but it looked ugly for like half a second. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. Anyways, Todd Gurley. Um, it looks like uh, they're shutting him down. As uh, you're probably when you drafted Todd Gurley, you were kind of hoping for good production for half the season anyway, and kind of expecting him to tail off. And right on schedule, Todd Gurley. You can you can release. Todd Gurley quite safely and not only that people uh people that you're up against might say oh he's dropped Todd Gurley I better go grab him so you know they're kind of grabbing a white elephant at this point I think uh, Todd Gurley is spent um and uh I, I think it's pretty fair to say you can drop Todd Gurley with and uh and not worry about it if you need somebody else wouldn't you say Jono yeah I mean that's fair the Falcons aren't really giving him volume anymore uh after the after the buy he's hasn't hit 10 carries where before it he had i think it looked like he was averaging like 18 or so carries before the buy and then volume fell off the efficiency is not there uh he hasn't scored a touchdown since the buy either so yeah Gurley's a a safe drop uh, uh so we'll go to kevin kevin uh who are you gonna drop from your roster that uh anybody uh droppable pick up one of these guys yeah, if you this, need is, them. this is a guy who i picked up in a few leagues kind of for the upside uh late in the season but it, it just hasn't really worked out um uh, and that's alan lazar um he's playing about 60 ish percent of the snaps but he's just not really producing um, hasn't had more than 50 yards in a game and only one touchdown in these last four games. And 17 targets is nothing really to, uh, you know, be excited about. Uh, so as much as the Green Bay offense is rolling, it's, it's Devontae Adams, like 80% Devontae Adams and then 20% for the rest of everyone else. And it's looking like Tanyan and, and Marquez Valdez Scantling are above Lazard in the pecking order. Yeah. So at this point, I, I think it's pretty safe to drop Lazard. Yeah. So Lazard has definitely dropped off to MVS. Uh, clearly, as you say, and Tanyan, uh, surprisingly, um, I don't know, Tanyan, uh, a, uh, a frustrating player at home, but uh, I mean, he's still getting the trust of Aaron Rodgers. And but like you say, Alan Lazard, yeah, he's a uh, pecking order problem. Jono, who are you going to drop? Uh, I feel like I'm cheating with this one, but Leonard Fournette, uh, he was already kind of being phased out of the offense uh, prior to this week, and then he was a healthy scratch. A surprising one, but healthy scratch nonetheless. And yeah, this seems to be Ronald Jones's backfield now. So yeah, yeah, you don't you don't really need to keep Fournette on your team unless you're holding out hope that you know Jones gets hurt or something. But otherwise, completely droppable. Yeah, I was actually surprised seeing McCoy getting touches. Why not? Where's uh, Fournette? And I didn't even know uh, Fournette was uh, out of the lineup. Was out this week, so until uh, very late, and it kind of surprised me. And then there's McCoy, and they're getting touches. So yeah, Leonard Fournette. Um, yeah, he's gone by the bye. Uh, Jono, uh, I was just about to mention uh, a playoff sleeper, and uh, so you had a playoff sleeper for us for Week 15. Yeah, uh, Dolphins uh, wide receiver slash running back, which he uh, qualifies at for both on Yahoo. Uh, Lynn Bowden. Uh, rookie came in and with both Devontae Parker and Jakeem Grant uh, leaving with leg injuries, it looks like uh, neither are going to play next week. Uh, specifically Grant, he's already week to week, so he's not going to play. But if Parker doesn't, then Bowden could be the guy. Um, he already led the team in targets, receptions, and yards uh, against the Chiefs, and he would probably be the Dolphins' like number two weapon uh, in the passing game. Uh, behind Mike Gusecki. 
And mm. I understand that the New England secondary is a lot easier, uh, a, lot, a lot more difficult to attack than the uh, than the defensive line. Um, but Bowden's versatility and uh, just his playmaking ability should uh, at least make him a big part of the game plan if Parker and Grant don't play. Right. Uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, it's interesting if they're only out of game. Uh, it's too bad they weren't playing the Raiders in this week because they play the Raiders in week 16. And even if uh, you don't start them, you might be even worth stashing for that week 16 game if uh, Parker isn't ready, right? Yeah, definitely. As long as Parker's hurt, uh, then Bowden's going to have uh, a role. Uh, uh, see who we've left out? Uh, oh, it's me, Tyron Johnson. Yeah, Tyron Johnson. Um, Mike Williams uh, <clears throat> left the game. I don't know uh, um, who... What, if he's coming back, but there's also Jalen Guyton, who's also another deep threat of the uh, Chargers. But Tyron Johnson um, is definitely a guy that you can probably pick, especially they play the Raiders now. The Chargers play the Raiders um, in Allegiance Stadium. I believe it's there. Uh, and indeed it is. The Chargers are at Allegiance Stadium in Las Vegas. So uh, it should be uh, it's with, uh, like I say, with Justin Herbert looking to get that rookie title, for most touchdowns in a season, um, yeah, he's gonna be looking. He's gonna be looking deep and for uh, for good shots. So, and I'm not saying that the the Raiders' defense are porous or anything. He's probably gonna get some good pressure up front. And so, if uh, Herbert can avoid the sacks, and which I think he can. But I don't know. There's a bit of a thing with uh, Herbert going on right now. Is that he, he seems to be checking down a little bit more. I don't know whether it's the fact that Eckler's back in or whatever's going on. But uh, anyways, you gotta you gotta win in week fourteen. So I think I like the fact that uh, yeah, we're uh, we're definitely looking at uh, uh, a good a good pickup at least to, uh, to perhaps uh, start only in an emergency really. To, Definitely, uh, definitely a guy to uh, go out and grab. So, Kev, you've got the you got the last word, and so um, you can speak to our two guys, or or just go straight into your own guy. Yeah, sadly, I'm gonna go finish it off with uh, this this guy named Chad Hansen. Um, I'm looking at his profile picture. He looks like a Chad. Uh, it makes <laughs> sense, but he's caught 12, 14 targets in the last two weeks. 157. Oh, I should mention he plays for the Texans. Uh, people right. might not know that. Uh, 12 14 for 157 yards. Eh, it's not terrible in half PPR or PPR that's getting it done. Um, seems to be your, you know, your typical gritty, uh, lunch pail type receiver. And, uh, I don't know. He's 6 2 2 2 2. So never mind. I take that back. But, um, with the Texans as banged up as they are, um, Deshaun's got to throw the ball to somebody. And I guess it might as well be this dude. Yeah. Yeah, but, sure. yeah, honestly, if you're starting this dude in either week 15 or week 16, you either are in a 16 team league or just you just have a free roll anyways. Because yeah. You don't deserve to be here. <laughs> I should also mention that Tyron Johnson had six receptions in that game, by the way. So final thoughts, gentlemen, going into uh, week 15. Um, some of the games, uh, some of the games coming up, uh, well, I'll just uh, mention this. We've got a lot of time left in the, in the podcast. So be able to zip through, uh, a few, a few big games. Um, you got, uh, the Patriots at the Rams. Got, uh, um, is it start your Rams? I guess it is. In, you mean the Jets? Uh, uh, pardon me. Pardon me, the Jets. Uh, I got the wrong week here. Um, I'm still living in last week. I don't know what's going on today. I'm just completely out of it. Um, where are we at? Uh, yeah, they got the Jets. Uh, we've got, uh, the Chiefs at the Saints. Now we're hoping that, um, you think, uh, Breeze will play? He's supposed to be back, isn't he? He says he's going to try to come back, but they don't really need to rush him. I suppose not. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, some other interesting matchups here. Um, Patriots at Dolphins. Jono. Yeah, that's a big game. I mean, the Patriots have to win. To They have to win out and get some help to make the playoffs, which probably not going to happen because the Ravens have to lose to either the Giants, Jags, or Bengals. So, no, probably not. <laughs> but, uh, oh well, fun game. Kev, what do you think of uh, Eagles at uh, at Cardinals? Jalen Hurts again against... Uh, uh, I mean... I'm hoping it'll be a, a little bit of a shootout. You've got two mobile quarterbacks going against each other, two quote unquote offensive geniuses at, at coach. So, um, you know, maybe it'll be a shootout. Hopefully, it'll be an entertaining game at least. Yeah, I'm, uh, John. I'm a little worried about uh, for the Seahawks uh, going up against this um, this very fired up 
Washington defense. They're go the, the Seahawks go to Washington. Um, are, you know, it's, are your Seahawks safe in a, in a game like that? Of course they are. Josh Gordon is returning, so Washington no, defense no, no. is an automatic bench. No, no, I mean seriously. <laughs> no, dead serious. Bench the Washington defense. Josh Gordon's got a new dimension to that offense. Here we go. <sighs> I can't believe you forgot. You just you just set me right up for that one. I didn't set you right up for that one because Josh Gordon set me is a, right up. Uh, Josh Gordon is a non-entity, <laughs> and you know it. Wr one. Wr one. Wr one. Who's gonna Who's he gonna play? Like oh, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, he could. They could put him in the place of uh, Tyler Lock- Tyler Lockett. I have to say, um, a bit of worrying times. But in a game like this, game like against Washington, I don't know. It's kind of a worrying thing uh, with the pressure that uh, Russell Wilson's going to find in this game. I think this is. I think this is real. A real uh, trap situation. Might not be. It might be that the Washington they just uh, just had that massive game, but. Uh, I don't know, that game kind of concerns me. It should concern your Seahawks, if you own Seahawks. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. It's, they, their defense really looked tough. So, I think the the best matchup, I think, of the week, uh, coming up next week, Kevin, is uh, Texans at Colts. That's look- Texans at Colts, yeah. That looks like a really nice I mean, fantasy. I mean, the Colts are rolling, so we'll see. So, uh, thank you for joining us on the Fantasy Edge. We will see you... Uh, for the fantasy finals, uh, maybe I don't know. We're getting close to Christmas. I don't know what I'm, whether we're gonna have a show or whether it's gonna be on the on the normal day. But uh, we'll see how next week pans out as we approach Christmas, and it'll be our Christmas show uh, for uh, for week 16. So, but we'll have a show. We'll have a show for Christmas. So uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, I am Richard Seville for Jonathan Chan and Kevin Hall. We'll see you next week on the Fantasy Edge. Good luck in your playoff semifinals. Awesome.